Hello, this is uh, Ghost FC3S, and today this, we're going to be doing a small tutorial on how to make meshes semi-transparent. Uh, there are a couple of tutorials out there on how to make uh, mes meshes uh, completely translucent. Um, I won't be going over that. This is just for like a semi-transparent uh, mesh that you would like to see, uh, giving you a glass visor or a helmet shield effect. Uh, you're going to need Outfit Studios, Body Slide, NIF Scope, and the BA Material Extractor. So let's get to it. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to start with Outfit Studios. Uh, go ahead and open up your 3D model that you want to add uh, transparency to. Now, there's ways to do the transparency where uh, you manipulate the uh, material file and the alpha channel on your texture to get it to be completely transparent. There's a couple of tutorials already out for that. If that's what you're looking for, uh, you can go ahead and click on the link below for that. Uh, this specifically is going to be if you want semi-transparent with a color and a texture added to it. Um, there aren't any great examples to give you in the default uh, vanilla game. Uh, but this is gives you the idea of you're looking through uh, colored glass, and uh, this is the best way to go about doing it and with playing around with it. So from here, you're going to want to go into your Fallout 4 extractor. Um, and what we're looking for is going to be the materials. We don't need the textures. So we want the meshes and we want the materials. So open up both of these. Now you're going to want to look at the flight helmet. material files. So you have glass, glass 1 and glass 2. We're going to select glass 01. Uh, this is just so we can get some of the settings and most of the work is already done for us. We just have to redirect the file path for it. You're going to want to grab um, one of the, your, your helmets. doesn't matter which one. Just as kind of a reference. So we're going to go helmet 01. Extract them. So now we have basically a reference tool as to what um, our material files should look like and what a successfully working uh, NIF file will look like. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and open up Flight Helmet. So this section here, you can see no transparency, and then this has full transparency. Um, but it works the same way uh, that the partial transparency works. There's just a, a slight different variables. So we have that. Go over to your model that you want to have converted. Um, now it's very important that the part of your model that you want to have a transparency attached to is separate from the model that you don't want to have transparency to. Now as you can see here, we want the flight helmet. You've got you know, the helmet itself, which is a solid color, and then the glass, which is its own separate mesh that allows us to see through it. So first thing you want to do is you have this value, BS light. Uh, shader property. Now if we go over to the flight helmet you'll see you have BS effect shader property. So we want to go ahead and completely delete this block. No block, remove branch. There is a way to convert it. Um, I have not had a great amount of success with converting it. Um, it results in some crashes to desktop with uh, when you vats a character wearing it. So it's best just to make um, a brand new um, branch. Uh, so this is our N alpha property that we had when we first copied it over or when we added it from uh, Outfit Studio. 
So you've got a flag here at 4844. Uh, the one for the flight suit is 4333, and the threshold is at 128. Threshold you can leave alone. We change this to match that of your flight suit. So 4333. All right, and then we're going to go block and insert a new branch. You're going to go through here and find your BS effect shader property right. okay you're gonna go back to your sub index try shape and in here I'm gonna try and expand this here for everyone under here you've got your skin and your shader property so the, the numerical value that was assigned to this when I created it was six so you're going to convert, just put in a six here. Oop. Now you can see the effect property has been brought under the same tree as your mesh. Now that will give most of your, um, just your basic um, values. Now, if you're only making one model that's going to have one uh, one texture to it and you're not going to be moving stuff around, you can actually go through here and assign the texture that you want it to go to, the color that it glows if you're going to be doing a glow map. Um, it's not, you know, we can actually go through and assign the textures, the normal maps, the environmental map. Uh, but there is a material file that will do all of that for you. And if you're looking at doing material swaps, I'd recommend doing it through the material file. So this is the, the way that I will you know, process it. Um, so we have to make sure that we've got the right uh, flags attached to it. So this is why I wanted you to have the flight suit. Duplicate these flags. So you see you've got skinned, use fall off, uses environmental map, external emission, Z buffer, transform, and effect change under the uh, flags one and two. So we're going to go ahead and duplicate those. You double click on that and it'll bring you a little pull down. So we know we want skinned. Just going to split this up so we can do side by side. We want skinned, uses external emissions, environmental mapping, uses fall off, Z buffer. I think that's it, yeah. So we got five there, five there, yeah. I'm going to do the same thing for this here. We're not using vertex colors. Go transform changed and effects lighting. Okay. Now that is all you need to do for your NIF file component, uh, unless you don't want to go through and make your material file. Um, You'd have to go through and basically assign it file paths for each one of your textures. So here's an example. Uh, texture source, armor, flight, helmet. And that's where this mesh will draw the texture file directly from. I think this is a holdover from New Vegas or Skyrim. Uh, but now that we have the material files, we can actually um, supersede and overwrite those file paths using the material file. Same with all of these values here. Um, these values here adjust your opacity and how see-through your mesh is along with your emission color. So if you want um, the glass to glow as well as be see-through, uh, this is your, you want your emission multiplier. Uh, one is the default, um, lowering it, um, increases the opacity of it because this color uh, doesn't get shown, uh, 
doesn't glow through it. Um, if you want it to glow more, you can give it a value of 5 to 10, 20, and it'll actually glow quite brightly. Um, this value here, your start off opacity, uh, this is generally what is your main value that affects the opacity of your glass piece. Um, so we want to set those in the NIF file here. So fall off angle, start at zero, stop at 100, which is just the one. And we want it to start at, say, 60%. Now this, this value, um, I believe we can change in the material file as well, but I'm just going to leave that here for now. Go ahead and save that up. Next is our material editor. You're going to want to find your glass material file. It's going to be under your armor folder. Now the, the main values here we don't really need to play around with, which is one of the reasons why I had you copy over a BGEM uh, folder or a material file, so we don't have to play around with all these settings. This is the main area we're going to be looking at. So yes, you can convert or you can adjust your fallout or your fall off um, in your BGEM file. Uh, you can also adjust your color, how much it glows, uh, but these are the main areas you want to look at here. Uh, your environmental texture file, we don't really want to change. We can use the shared cube mapping for glass, um, but we're going to want to change your base. So, you want same as everything else. You want your normal maps, you want your specular maps. Um, and that's it. That's a that's pretty much all you really need to change from a, the vanilla glass folder. Um, I don't want to alter the color or the glow effect of that mask at all, so I'm going to leave that at 1. And then um, I do want it to be less transparent than if it was clear, so I'm going to set that at 0.6. And I'm going to go ahead and save as. Back into materials, save it wherever your, your working folder is. Name it. Okay, so now that you've got your material file all set up, go back into your outfit studio, reopen, so a new project, reopen the visor you are working on, so it's the blue glass, mm -hmm. select your properties, you're going to go select your new material file. Now, uh, it won't be see-through in Outfit Studios. Um, it'll only do that when you uh, are in-game. Um, the creation kit will render it as completely invisible. Just, you know, follow quirks. Go ahead and export this. I will uh, see you in game. And as you can see, we now have semi-transparent visor. Um, it's still a little, little too um, dark for my taste. 
Uh, so you can play around with the settings in the material file to change that, uh, that visor color out and uh, how transparent it is. Uh, if you guys have any questions, you can hit me up on my Discord or uh, over at Reddit at GhostFC3S. Uh, you can send me mes uh, messages there. I can try and help you out through the process. But uh, after many, 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 many hours of trying to get the, get this to work and figure this out, uh, this was the easiest and quickest way um, I was able to uh, consistently um, repeat this successful uh, semi-transparent mesh. Like I said there are other ways to do it. There's a way to do it straight from 3D Studios Max, but that make, means you need to have uh, the 2013 version and the plugins and that make sure they're formatted and they're working correctly. Um, if you don't have access to those tools, if you're using Blender, a body slide, and NIF scope, uh, this is your best way to go about doing that. And it's a relatively quick process once you know what you're doing. Um, it's just, just like everything else with uh, the creation kit followed. There's no documentation for it, and it's a lot of trial and error. But I hope you guys found this useful, and uh, hope to see some more see-through visors out there. Take care, everyone. One more thing I did want to uh, show you guys. It, uh, you can play around with the glowing colors. So we got a blue visor, we're gonna keep it blue. We're gonna turn this up to about five. Um, I said I didn't like how uh, opaque that visor was, so we're gonna lower that to 30. Go ahead and save that up. Relaunch Fallout. We can uh, take a look and see, see how that turned out for us. So as you can see, the Visors are nice and uh, glowy now. However, the glow tends to wash out the transparency effect. It still has the transparency. However, it is uh, glow is kind of overtakes it. Um, some of my other visors, I went ahead and split this up, so I actually have a separate mesh for um, the visor and for the glow effect. So you kind of get the best of both worlds. That's their standard blue tea. You get that nice little glowing ring around the outside of it. And in my opinion, a nice little transparency. You can kind of still see your player character, but he's uh, a little obscured by the the visor glass. All right, so you can play around with those values and those settings and get it to your personal preference for your mod. Um, enjoy.